The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. You might have noticed something. I'm wearing a hat. It's right there. One of my friends saw this video clip and referred to me as a desoldering wizard. They asked if I had any tips for using desoldering braid, and frankly, I didn't. It doesn't always work that well for me. The only tip I could even think of at the time was to use high quality wick. So I turned to the Element 14 community and asked you, what are your favorite desoldering braid tips? So much great feedback came in, I was struggling to tell the difference between truth, myth, and experience. So to get some help, I called MG Chemicals. Through our conversation, they asked if they could send me some stuff to feature in an episode, as well as be a sponsor. So as long as you promise not to tell them that I already have and use their products, that was an easy yes for me and the show producers. So in this episode, I give you tips on making desoldering braid work better, and I'll share some bits of knowledge I learned from MG Chemicals along the way. With that, let's go measure. Well, actually in this episode, it's let's go desolder. Before I assume you know what I mean by desoldering braid, I'm talking about the stuff that looks like this. You might also hear it called other names. For example, MG Chemicals calls theirs Super Wick. You use it with a soldering iron that heats up the braid and the solder joint at the same time. Capillary action causes the melting solder to draw or wick up the braided copper. So it actually turns out that the desoldering process is actually the same as the soldering process, just in reverse. The wick is giving the molten solder somewhere new to go. Remember, when using desoldering braid, it is critical to get good contact between your iron, the solder joint, and the wick. Also, make sure when removing the iron that the wick comes up at the same time. Otherwise, the braid can cool fast enough to become part of your circuit. The first tip is related to soldering iron tips. Most irons have an array of tips for different soldering tasks. Chisel tips are my recommended and go-to for using braid because they maximize the heat transfer. Although sloped or bevel tips can work as well. Conical tips seem like a good idea for a hole, but they usually just end up tearing up the wick. In fact, for removing solder from holes, I find that a chisel tip almost always works better, especially with a couple of the usage tips that we'll mention later on. Before we get to those, just a quick comment. All of these tips and tricks require practice. None of these are the magic step that will make desoldering braid work every single time, but they can all help you get better at using it. With that, let's talk about one more component, which is flux. Remember that flux is a chemical cleaning agent. It helps remove oxidation and eliminate contaminants that improve the effective heat transfer from the iron to the solder joint. Also, it makes the visible smoke we see and smell while soldering. A common tip I received was that in order for desoldering braid to work better, you must always add more flux. I had an opinion based on my experience and MG Chemicals confirmed it. They told me that a good desoldering braid should not need additional flux. Most braids available already have some that coat it. So maybe always is a strong adverb. You might need flux if the wick is old because as the original dries out and the copper oxidizes, it becomes less effective. Just to show that flux isn't always necessary, this clip is me desoldering the SMA connector from a particular board. This board sat on my desk for almost three years. Before I did anything, I never cleaned off the flux residue or any of the dust that it accumulated. Yet the super wick is having no trouble removing the solder from those joints. In the package that MG Chemicals sent me, I found something I never heard of, which was a flux remover pin. I knew about flux pins to add solder, but this seemed like it was going to be the opposite. This pin deposits remover in a very small area, making it very easy to clean without having to expose the entire bore to a wash cycle. So I thought it was worth sharing. As another reminder, no clean flux does not mean you should not or cannot clean it. It just means whatever is left behind is electrically inert. My opinion is that even though it is safe to leave, you should still clean it off. Okay, let's go on to the next tip. Believe it or not, sometimes to remove solder, you have to first add more solder. If the desoldering braid doesn't seem to be pulling out any more solder, then it is time to add some more to the original joint. 
The flux from the new solder helps clean contaminants, but more importantly, there is more surface area for the molten solder to start the wicking action into the braid. And I think this is the critical tip. The whole process is heat drawing liquid solder into a huge heat sink. So if that process stops, then removing the solder can fail. Sometimes I find putting a small drop of solder on the iron and then touching the wick helps to transfer the heat to the braid, which does a better job of drawing solder from the joint. The other thing to realize is that desoldering braid is a consumable and good braid can get consumed very quickly. Now, if you feel like you're going through it too fast, either try a slightly wider width, which I'll show you later on, or realize you are probably using it correctly. Okay, now if adding solder to remove solder wasn't confusing, wait until you see our next tip. My favorite came from a prominent Element 14 community member who said to use more heat and to use less heat. I joked that this tip was contradictory, but it's actually kind of true. When using desoldering braid, there is a significant mass that needs to be heated in order to get the solder to wick into the braid. If you use too little heat, the braid isn't going to be very effective. And then if you use too much heat, you can of course damage the board being reworked. So then how much should you use? As an example, when using leaded solder, I solder around 350 degrees. When I use super wick, I'll take my temperature as high as 425 degrees. When soldering a large heat sink like a copper pour or ground plane, I'll take my iron as high as 450 degrees. Don't forget to bring the soldering iron back down to normal temperatures. Otherwise, you might shorten the life of your tip. One other community member suggested to cut the wick so that there is less heat sinking action. You can use pliers to manipulate the wick. This also prevents you from burning your fingers. Speaking of cutting, you need to be careful because it can change the braid. Let's go back to the microscope and take a look at two braids side by side. The one on the top is a low quality braid that came in some random kit, while on the bottom is Super Wick. Notice how there is a tighter braid pattern and the color difference. The Super Wick has much finer wires, which are made of high quality copper and show little oxidation, so it is going to transfer heat very well. Here I am using some no name wick and what I want you to notice is how pressure from the iron causes the braids to separate. Here's the thing, you can ruin good braid when you cut it. What happens is the edges become frayed. So when desoldering, don't use the cut edge. Instead, pick a place a few centimeters from that edge. Another tip that I received said to bend the braid while using it. It appears that this helps with the capillary action and gives the molten solder a chance to wick up even further. But don't overdo it with these bends because then you end up weakening the braid pattern, which is what we just talked about. Kind of like with the less and more heat suggestion, you do have to develop a little bit of a feel for what works right for your situation and the braid that you're using. So now let's talk about how you pick from the various types of braids available. There are a wide variety of super wick and other types of braids available, so how do you know which one to choose? The biggest consideration is probably size or width, which is going to vary based on your work. From my experience, my preferred size is two millimeters, I also keep a reel of one millimeter around because it helps for parts smaller than 0805. By going smaller, desoldering braid generally works better, but you'll start to consume it much faster. So having at least two sizes on hand can be helpful. Now, other than size, the flux infused into the braid can vary. For example, you might find wick with rosin or no clean flux. In a professional environment, pick the style that matches your business's board process. This particular super wick caught my attention because it says, lead free on it. And at first I was thinking, well, isn't all desoldering braid inherently lead free? MG Chemicals explained to me that they formulated a flux specific for lead free solder and that this wick works well for those applications. It'll work fine on boards that have leaded solder as well. Now using their products as an example, there are two other marks I want to point out on the labels. The first one is this big danger symbol. The label is here for compliance reasons. All braid that has flux contains a certain amount and that amount requires warnings by some countries for shipments. So don't freak out just because it says danger. And the second one caused me to scratch my head for a few seconds. It says ESD safe, but desoldering braid is copper. Isn't all copper inherently ESD safe? Well, this label is referring to the plastic container that the super wick is in and not the actual wick or braid itself. 
Thank you to MG Chemicals for sponsoring this episode. I have been a long time user of their products and they offer much more than just desoldering braid. They have stuff like flux removers, isopropyl alcohol, conformal coat, and lead free solder, just to name a few. Also, a big thank you to the Element 14 community members who provided some suggestions for using desoldering braid. Remember that over on element14.com, there are show notes for this episode. They include links to these products and the post where the community contributed their tips. Not only is that the best place to ask me questions, it is where I ask you questions and then feature them in a video, like this one. Check below for a link to all of that good stuff. Thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to utilizing capillary action on my electronics workbench.